Uh, tell me something about your hardships. You know, we just love to talk about the green times of our life, the time we were seeing the lights. Money was every time in our pocket. Everything yeah, was no, going great. No. But I want to learn from your life. In fact, no. I believe that all of our viewers will be Amen. blessed. When they, because this is what I have read somewhere, that the best way to preach the gospel is show your scars. How yeah. you have preached, the way yeah. Paul expresses. Yeah. I want to see your ex scars, that mm. what you have been through. Well, brother, we would truly be here for 24 hours. If I were to open up and share my testimony, how God took me from where he is to now, but it would be too long. But I know everybody looks at you as a white person and thinks you got it all together. You're a millionaire, mm. that you got all this money and you've never gone through a hardship. My wife and I worked for nine hard years back in Canada to come up with this beautiful acreage, this piece of land, which we had cattle, dogs, vehicles, we had it all. We had our retirement figured out there. And then all, one, all of a sudden one day we heard the Holy Spirit say, we want you to sell everything you have and move to Malawi, Africa. You said everything? Everything, bro, everything. Sell my cattle, sell my truck, sell my, sell my car, sell my lawnmower, sell my everything, all the equipment I had. We, we had it made, brother, we, we were doing good. And in this time, we were still doing ministry in Malawi, but God goes, now I want to see how much you love me. I want to see how much, I get emotional with this, because it was hard. It was hard, brother. How much do you love me? And I, I remember hearing the Holy Spirit say, I want you to move. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a question. This was a direct order from the Holy Spirit, from God Almighty, instructing my wife and I to sell everything we had and move to Malawi, Africa. Long story short, we got to Malawi, Africa. One thing that is very prevalent and in, in, in large in Malawi, Africa is malaria. My wife got stage four malaria. Stage four malaria. Stage four, which is the worst. And at that moment, you already sold your house? We, we were already, we were living now in Malawi. We sold the house, we moved to Malawi, and, and we were there. Got sick. My wife got sick with malaria. But we had taken a trip from, from Malawi to Dubai. Hmm. And my wife caught this malaria while she was in Dubai, where they don't know nothing about malaria. And when they found out she had malaria, they're going, where are you people from? We're going, we, we, we're missionaries in Malawi, Africa. Anyway, I watched my wife in front of me dying. Dying, brother. On her chart, on her chart, the doctor came in on the ninth day and put D-I-C, which means death is coming. They could do no more for her. <clears throat> I'm sorry. That's hard. And uh, <clears throat> all I could do was post, friends, I need prayer. My queen, the love of my life, the mother of my children is dying. They've done all they can do here in Dubai. There's no more they can do. The only one that can touch her now is God. And every day I went and I prayed. And we, uh, we had people praying. But now it was time for the saints to join together. Wow. I left her on the ninth day. I went back on the tenth day. And she was awake. She was awake? For nine days, brother. For nine days, she had no idea I was at her bedside. For nine days, she had no idea that I was coming and going, Babe. Babe. Wake up. Babe, there were days she would wake up and she'd, she'd talk to me, but she had no recollection of it because malaria will really test the brain. Hmm. It swells the brain to a capacity. And on that 10th day when I walked in, there she was, smiling, weak, very weak. But three days later, I was able to take her home. 